Put your mobile phones into silent mode. The show begins right now. I have the awkward pleasure of introducing myself uh, as a Star Sage host, but also talker. Um, just getting my screen on. My name's Kenji. I'm half Japanese, half British, born and raised in Hong Kong. I live in London, but I'm working globally for the, as a consultant for the past 13 years. Uh, my talk today is about bartender journeys, uh, brought to you by Diageo Bar Academy uh, as part of their ideals to inspire, connect, uh, and engage with the bartenders around the world. So what is Bartender Journeys all about? I want to take you on a journey, an exploration of the different journeys to the modern bartender. When I started bartending many, many years ago, there was very few opportunities for bartenders, uh, but now with a plethora of opportunities uh, available, I just want to explore and excite you and inspire you about where you can go. Does anyone know what BC is when we talk about bartending? Shout it out if anyone knows what bar BC is. Simon? Before cranberry. Before cranberry juice. In the 1990s, there was very little in terms of the way of juices and different uh, mixes to explore your spirits and your cocktails with. Uh, and then cranberry juice came into effect. Uh, it was, uh, had a long bar life. Uh, it, could, it could live without refrigeration, and obviously it could go into a cosmopolitan. So it, it came about, but it indicated a time where the shift changed about what could happen. So before cranberry juice, if you were a bartender and wanted to stay within the industry, but perhaps you're getting a little old or tired of being behind the bar, I mean, great if you wanted to be a, a lifer bartender and you wanted to serve drinks like many friends I have behind the bar, but if you wanted to move on, there weren't that many opportunities. Remember, this time there was no internet, there was no smartphones. The only way of educating yourself was seeing what other bartenders were doing. And then things like Class Magazine and the other magazines start coming out. But before then, if you wanted to move on, perhaps you'd be a, a bar manager. Or you'd work in a different bar uh, with different uh, cocktails. And then if you had the cash available, perhaps you could become a bar owner. But even that was too difficult for most people. Uh, so a lot of people, bartending was just a transient job. You just took it as a stepping stone to another job. But now, we want bartenders to stay in the industry. So where can you go from the next steps? So obviously, the barometer theme is roots. And as a root as a bartender, where can this take you? What opportunities do you have? Well, I see it as six main areas within bartending. Uh, that you could go. The corporate world. Do you want to work for one of the big spirits companies, one of the smaller spirits companies, or a company that's associated with drinking? If you just look outside and all the different um, the bar tools and the kits and all the different companies that are involved now with bartending, there's lots of opportunities. Agencies. Perhaps some of you work part-time, you run events, uh, or PR agencies, 
all the agencies involved. Imagine everything that's gone into setting up Barometer, all the different people and all the different connections that there are. Entrepreneurs, I'm going to go into this a lot uh, as part of my journey as well. Uh, the innovations that are now available to you as a bartender uh, are huge. And obviously, it's about teaming up with the right people, having the right team and motivation behind you. And it's people in this room and people here at Barometer that can help you do that. The media side of it, which I'll delve into, whether you want to go on to a journalist or an author or a historian or social media. Operations. Perhaps you do want to stay wet behind the bar, bar manager, bar owner, groups owner, which I'll talk about. And education, bar shows, bar trainers, bar schools. The roots can grow further afield. So I'm going to take each one at a time and have a little exploration around each area. So in my personal journey, after I was bartending, which was uh, mostly in Australia, I came back to the UK and I was looking for a job. And I got offered this little job in a company I'd never heard of called Diageo. It was newly formed. It was Guinness UDV. And I walked into their office. And I just saw a huge wall of alcohol. And I was like, I think I'm in the right place. So by accident, I joined the world's biggest spirits company. Uh, I just had a, a temporary job with them for three months. But I looked on the intranet. And then I started a training program called ESP, Every Sir Perfect. And for the next five years in the UK, all I did was a training program every day, teaching people how to pour a perfect pint of Guinness, how to make a gin and tonic, you know, the right glass, the right ice, the right mixer. We still do that today, but in these days, remember, there was, once again, no social media. So bars weren't doing things in perhaps the best way, or more importantly, pubs and publicans. So I got into the corporate world. I then started running training programs across the UK. They were like, this is going really well. It's our biggest sales driver. We love training. There used to be sales and marketing, and now there's this training thing. Uh, so I started doing it around Europe. So for two more years, I traveled around Europe. And then they said, hey, we like this. It's doing really well. Go globally. Uh, and Smirnoff came along and said, we want you to join us and become a global brand ambassador. I was like, oh, OK. Uh, but they wanted me to do it from the outside. So I set up my own company. It's called Spiritual Advisors. And for the next seven and a half years, I was the global brand ambassador for the world's biggest spirit at the time. Uh, and we had a lot of fun back then, world's biggest spirit, trying to show the world how to do things on a big scale. And that was my entry into corporate. But then I realized, actually, there are many different ways to go in, whether you're a smaller brand or want to enter the big brand. And brand ambassadorship is actually now one of the main routes bartenders see as the opportunities to get in. Maybe you're looking to win one of the competitions, whether it's world class or legacy or around the world. Because obviously, if you win one of their competitions, you're in their highlights. And hopefully, you can get a work with them or ambassador from them. And then you can step forward, maybe a little bit outside the bar. Maybe you want to do it part time. In the last few years, I was looking after 27 different brand ambassadors uh, in, the, in this region for the Azure. And some of them were bartenders, some of them owned bars, some of them were trainers. Each of them have a different role. So there's lots of opportunities with the different brands. Obviously, there's the big guys, but there's the smaller guys as well. If you prefer the smaller with less politics, there's the distributors of these brands. There's the POS companies of these brands. There's the PR companies of these brands. Maybe you want to go into sales and marketing. More and more of these spirits companies now actually want to hire bartenders who have real knowledge and understanding of what the bartender community is all about. And sometimes you can still do that whilst being a bartender. So you can grow your roots uh, from the corporate side as well. Agencies. As I said, maybe you want to set up an agency. Maybe you want to work for an agency part time. Maybe you've got children and can work cer certain times uh, of the year. So there's a lot of events, PR agencies that are now setting up uh, everything that you see. Entrepreneurs, as I said, will come back uh, to this and talk about it a lot more. But can anyone tell me? Uh, maybe you can shout out some brands that you have seen on, uh, on Instagram or your friends that have started up their own brands. Anyone give me some examples? Shout it out. Cause... Aviation, okay. S some more? Okay, good. Some more? Small brands that you've seen in innovations from bartenders. Will you? Will you? 
Okay? Easy pour, yes, that's a good one. Hopefully, I'm going to jog your memory with a few mores. Anyone know that runs uh, an ice company? Anyone know ice companies? Yeah. Anyone know tool companies? Anyone you know whose friends sell us tools now? Whether it's strainers, bar spoons, new shakers. A few more. Good. Uh, ice, tools, consultancy. I've been running my consultancy for, I think, 13 years now. And it just takes a certain type of person to run a consultant because you work for yourself uh, at home. Uh, there's positives and, and negatives, which we'll come back into. We talked about media, social media. Anyone shout out uh, any bartenders that have now stopped bartending and doing social media full time? Calabresi. He's still bartending mostly, but yes, he's a uh, big famous on social media. Da, cocktails for you. Obviously, a huge one. Two guys that were bartending, they got into social media. And now they have over a million followers on Facebook, uh, a third of a million on Instagram. And that's what they do full time. They travel the world, sponsored by brands to take part and to social media. So uh, that is now their full time job. They got into it by accident. Uh, we talked about journalists today, about the number of books. That's how Gary Regan uh, gets so much fame and an accolation because of those amazing books that he, he's written. He's told me that he doesn't make much money from the book, uh, but obviously, uh, all the fame that comes with it. So maybe you're looking at writing or becoming a journalist or an influencer on that side. Operations. Obviously, we need lifers. Jeff will always talk about how he's a lifetime bartender. And I have a lot of good friends that will be lifetime bartenders. And you, they don't want the politics and management or ownership. They just want to make drinks. And I'll show you some uh, behind there. Uh, but bar owners. It's now affordable and a lot easier than previously to run your own bar or to, to take ownership in your own bar. So if you see us at a dream, it's now available uh, if you can get the cash together. Or if you know uh, Lorenzo or a few other guys that are now traveling the world and looking after group operations for bars that are now exploding all over. Education, bar shows, bar schools, trainers, IBA, being part of the competitions. So whereas before you could become a bartender to bar manager, you now got a plethora of opportunities available uh, to the modern bartender. It's all about the passion and dream that you want to take uh, to get you there from where you are now as a bartender. But something I always say, if you don't know where you're going, any road will take you there. You may know this quote from Alice in Wonderland, which I'll read out so you can hear the translation. One day, Alice came to a fork in the road and saw a Cheshire cat in a tree. Which road do I take, she asked. Where do you want to go, was his response. I don't know, Alice answered. Then said the cat, it doesn't matter. So if you're working in a bar and you're like, yes, I'm going to these speakers and I'm getting inspiration, but I don't know what I want to do. This is what I want to get from you today. I want you to get some inspiration. At the end of this talk, I want you to have an idea, perhaps the next step that you want to take from this road. Being half Japanese, I have a lot of Japanese symbolism in my life. Uh, you may have, I believe there's a new bar in town called Ikigai, uh, which means a reason for being. What is your reason for being? Uh, and why are you here? And what do you do with it? I'm going to step back up. So have you seen the, the pretty patterns of Ikigai about the four elements, passion, mission, profession, and vo vocation, i.e. what you love, what the world needs, what you can be paid for, and what you're good at. So you need to think about these four things because it's a, a goal that never stops. You want to go through. I want to read to you. Uh, in 2013, I think, I know you can't read this, but I'm going to dive into a second. Uh, Oedo san, Kazuo Oedo san, very famous Japanese bartender. Uh, not a Ueno san, there's two of them, Ueno san and Ueno san, just to be confusing. Uh, inventor of the hard shake. He did um, a launch of his translated book by Cocktail Kingdom. 
uh, in New York, and I had a very lucky opportunity to interview him and ask him a few questions. And one of my questions to him is, what is your itigai? What is your reason uh, for being? And this is what he responded. When I talk about my itigai, it's definitely shake my shaker every day. This is my itigai. Mixing cocktails is the only way I've been making my living. The cocktail is my life. All I want is to make a good cocktail for my guests. This is what I'm here for. Sometimes I make a great cocktail that exceeds my expectations. Sometimes I tremor with excitement that I have made a great cocktail. I want to do nothing but shake my shaker and serve good cocktails. I make a cocktail with a strong wish that I want my guests to enjoy my cocktail. My guest is in my bar wanting to drink a good cocktail. This is collaboration. The guest's wish and my wish and this collaboration is the highlight of my work and I truly enjoy my work. And that kind of blew me away. A 70 year old bartender whose mission in his life is to make a great cocktail and every cocktail that he makes is aimed towards that perfection. And that's a lot of the Japanese uh, aim towards perfection. They take one thing and they drive to it for the rest of their life. So if you are a career bartender, thank you, and you want to shake a, shock, shake a shaker for the rest of your life, that's perfect, because we need the Peter Dorellis uh, and the Calabreses and those heroes that will be standing up here in 40, 50 years' time talking about cocktails. But if you want to move on, where can you go? So to give you a few ideas, I brought out um, a few examples of bartenders that I respect in their journeys. Uh, these are two of my friends, uh, Tim Etherton Judge uh, and Stephanie Jordan. They, uh, they were both brand ambassadors with Diageo for Bullet and Tanqueray. And just recently last year, they launched a, a new brand of Calvados called Avalan. Uh, and they put all their heart and soul for it. So they took all their life savings, every penny they had to create uh, this new brand, uh, being positive. Simon talked about communities earlier, about bartenders helping each other, and they're trying to build this community. So uh, they gave us a couple of quotes that I'd like to say. So Steph said, a learning, if you want to set out to create your own brand, whether it's a liquid or a tool or ice or company, stay curious and ask yourself why you do the things you do. If you can find your purpose, the rest comes easy. And a quote from Tim, it's a job, not a lifestyle. Be smart, play the long game, look after your health, because he started Healthy Hospo, which you may have heard of. Find what you love, and remember there's life outside of the bar. So great words from two people uh, that I really admire on their journeys. And here's a few others uh, that I just grabbed from my Facebook about people whose different journeys have taken them in different uh, directions. When I first met Tess Posthumus, uh, she was a bartender working in Door 74, brand new. I started using her at events, uh, very fresh, very young, very eager to get into it. And now, where has she got to? She won world class in the Netherlands. She set up her own brand. She started doing supper club uh, events. And then with um, uh, the help of many, she's really grown and it become really inspiring, especially within the female bartender. Uh, and flying uh, cocktails. What a, so a bar owner, an entrepreneur. Who's heard of Martin Hudak? A very inspiring journey. Actually, one of my claims to fame, uh, I didn't realize uh, that I, I, I showed him how to make his very first martini uh, way back many years ago in Slovakia. I was doing some training courses and this young Martin was on my course. And I showed him how to make a, a martini and then 10 years later, I, I walked into the American bar uh, and there he was, and he made me a martini there. So as a trainer, that's amazing to see when you, see a, you, you drop an idea into someone's brain and you just see them explode and take it. You never know where these ripples are going to take. And I love the story that Martin tells about um, uh, his coffee championship. He kept entering the World Coffee Championship, and I think it was two or three times that he came second in the world. And he kept pushing and pushing. Every year, came, coming second, and then finally he won. Uh, which is an amazing kind of journey that you take from a bartender working the Savoy, then a brand ambassador, obviously maybe Sammy, uh, over in Australia. Who knows Dima? Of course everyone knows Dima. Uh, when I first met Dima many years ago, uh, my role was to look after all the Diageo brand ambassadors, reserve brand ambassadors uh, in the region, as I said. And someone came up to me and said, do you know we have a brand ambassador in, in Ukraine? I was like, no, nobody told me about this guy. Apparently, he'd been the brand ambassador for two years, and nobody actually knew about it. He was just there, chipping away uh, at the role. So I came in and met Dima, 
and obviously he became a brand ambassador full-time, worked at Paravos, and now look at what Paravos has become uh, and taking over the Ukraine and uh, the region. So what an amazing journey. Uh, my friend Chris uh, Lacey, he was uh, working at the Connaught, he worked at Rules, uh, and this is one of my friends that will become a lifetime bartender because I know that's, that's what he loves doing. That's, that's his itige, to make drinks. Who saw Tom Jones last year? He was here on stage. And actually, probably my favorite speaker of all time. I met him uh, when he was a bar manager uh, up in Scotland. And now he's the brand ambassador for one of the biggest spirits in the world uh, of Johnny Walker. Just amazing journey. Uh, we went and built houses together uh, after the tsunami. Max LaRocca. Ah, you should definitely get Max LaRocca in town. A fantastic bartender working in Barcelona. He entered uh, world class. Uh, he won the Spanish competition in 2010, I think it was, and came over. Then became a brand ambassador, now set up in a consultancy. So another one that went down the consultant route. Marcio Silva, a bartender in Brazil really took his, uh, one of the guys with the most passion that I've ever met in the world. He wanted to be in the industry so bad that he would pay his own way so he could come and work with the big brands, uh, the big competitions. Never seen anyone strive so hard to make it. And now he, runs a, he owns a bar in the, the top 100. Uh, and it's amazing to see the passion that a bartender can take and really take it through. He used to work with Tristan in Diageo, who's read one of Tristan's books. Uh, definitely go out and buy some of his books. I mean, an amazing writer. Uh, so he's taken bartending, and he used to run uh, 50 down in, the, in Cornwall, uh, Jamie Oliver, and now a world-famous uh, author uh, of books. Uh, a friend of mine also used to work in Diageo with Dan Dove, uh, a bartender, moved on to Brand Ambassador, used to manage a lot of the UK and London uh, scene. Uh, now he's setting up a new agency called Global Bartender. Uh, which is basically a, a, a recruitment agency where you can hire the world's best bartenders and use them around the world. So a brand new innovation. So lots of ideas, lots of journeys, and uh, starting from the bartender routes, about different routes, uh, paths that we can take. We talked about social media. Cocktails for you. Uh, 360,000 followers uh, in the US, licensed to distill. Over a million followers uh, from there. So this is what they do full time now is the social media side of things, community for bartenders, by, part by bartenders. Uh, there's a lot outside, uh, obviously the bartenders in the social media side, whether you have 10 to 50,000 followers. Uh, I'm not, these, I don't know these ones personally, so I don't know if they were ever bartenders, but now this is what they, they do for a living. Uh, obviously work in collaborations and do uh, collaborations with different brands and sponsorships out there. So start building your, your social media if that's a, a route that you want to go down in terms of really opportunities that never existed in my time. When I was at school and you went to see a careers advisor, uh, there was basically a book. These are the jobs that you can do. You can be a doctor, a pilot, a traffic warden, whatever. There was a very limited book of jobs that you could take. This is like 35 years ago. Uh, and now, imagine a book containing every job that's available. They say for our children's generation, so those who are growing up, uh, the baby, oh, I, can't, I don't even know the name of that generation now, uh, but they say that generation, 70% of their jobs do not exist right now. Now, imagine talking about being a blogger 10 years ago when the internet didn't exist. We, we, we don't even understand how taking a picture of something and putting some hashtags in it, which to us just means number, uh, could actually get you a quite a good earning. Now think about the jobs that are to come. So right now it's exploded. All right, the, I feel like Donald Trump there. It's exploded. Um, I shouldn't say that. Um, where was I? Uh, so the, the opportunities have exploded just in the last five, six, seven years, thinking about where the opportunity is now coming for, for us and the, the next communities coming on. So I wanted to talk about innovators and entrepreneurs and people that are taking uh, the next step. Obviously, you saw Simon talking about Fords, uh, and maybe you know some of these people behind. Uh, come listen to uh, Philip Duff talking about Geneva later on today. Um, porn star Martini, Douglas, uh, Williams, uh, Andrew Nichols, sorry, uh, Rum, 
Alex Kameling, uh, Giuseppe, uh, and obviously Marion and Tony on their electric bitters. So see, some of these, these are the guys that have made it uh, to some extent. There's a lot of there that haven't. If I asked each of these people what recommendations uh, they would give to bartenders who want to make it themselves, I want to sh uh, make sure that you have it in heart that this is what you truly want to do. You've got to put your life savings, your, your house, uh, your marriage, your, 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 your partner's life on the line in order to do it. So if you do want to take a step in terms of entrepreneur uh, and take it, make sure that you're there with all your heart and take it forward. Uh, so a little bit about my journey. My company, as I said, uh, was called Spiritual Advisors. So I, I set up this agency. I had a uh, consultancy. I had no idea what I was doing. I was very lucky to be backed by brands. That was my logo originally of the glasses, which kind of uh, shows the precarious moment that I was there. And I just rode uh, the consultancy. Back then, brand ambassadors didn't really exist. Uh, Simon kind of took the mantle, that forward. People like Angus came forward with Tanqueray and a few others, and brand ambassadors came forward, and then we started doing consultancy. There's lots of different consultancy, whether it's uh, working for bars, uh, building their, their menus. I know a lot of you would have been working with different outlets to design their menu lists, uh, or you go to the brands and use their power and might. I, then cha I, got a little, I had to get a little bit serious and started knuckling down uh, so I changed my company to Nomu Consult. Nomu is Japanese for drink, or the art of drinking. Um, that's my little, my little stamp in there. Uh, so the positives of being uh, your own person is that you can choose happiness. I decided to work three days a week, four hours a day. Uh, and that, that was my, my thing. Uh, I, I really wanted to live life. I run ultra marathons and, and kayak and uh, go out there because as a consultant, I can. I can choose which days to work and which days I can't. But at the same time, if, so, if uh, a client of mine drops me, they don't need to give me any retribution, that's it. I've got no more money coming into next week. Uh, so there's the pros and cons of working for yourself, uh, but as long as you've got uh, your missions. These are my four statements in life that I try and abide by. The itty guy, constantly remind yourself why you're doing what you're doing. Uh, what you love and make sure what you're doing someone's willing to pay for it and if you're willing if you love it so much uh, That you put your heart and soul in it I guarantee someone will pay you to actually do it because you need that passion that dedication uh, to one thing Has everyone heard of the Pareto principle? Good uh, If you've never heard of the Pareto principle sometimes called the 80 20 rule Look it up. It's the thing that drives me every day 80% of results come from 20% of effort so if you just put 20% in and you get most of what you're doing, great. What if you put 20% and get 80% of something else? All of a sudden, you can create 400%, whereas once you only had 100%, so, but in different factors of your life. But I won't talk too much about uh, Pareto principle. Kaizen is another Japanese uh, phrase. It means quality circles. It means continuous improvements uh, of yourself. You're always looking for feedback on everything that you do uh, and circle it back in. Does all this make sense? Yes. So find your passion, uh, take it forward, and drive what you want. Um, one of the biggest questions I get asked as a consultant, I want to set up my own business, but I don't know how much to charge people. Uh, I don't know what to, uh, how much I'm worth. I wanna, if you've ever thought about how much you would charge uh, as a consultant, if you didn't work for a company, I want you to get your phones out. I want you to um, get your phone out and get your calculator. Okay. Now, how much do you want to earn in one year doing, if you are a consultant or working for yourself? Tap that number in. How, in your own currency, in your own head, you don't need to share it or show anyone. Get your phone, tap in how much you want to earn in a year. 10,000, 20,000, 50,000, 100,000, doesn't really matter. What you would want to earn and be happy, put that in there. Now, how many days a week are there in a year? Obviously, 356, but you can't work every day of the year. Uh, so uh, maybe if you counted out weekends and holidays, the average person works about 200 days. But as an entrepreneur, as someone that's driving everything, you need to work a little bit harder. So you're going to work 300 days in a year. But how much of those 300 days can you actually earn money for. I would say, uh, one of the biggest learning I've got, take your working time and divide it by three. 
A third of your time, you're actually doing the work. Like I'm here on stage doing my work, doing my consultancy. A third of your time, you've got to be looking for new work and pitching to new clients and doing new work, and you don't always get it, so you're constantly looking uh, for new ways to earn a revenue stream. So your first third, you're doing it. Second, but if they drop you, obviously you need stream two, the people that you've been working on maybe over a long time. And the last third is your admin, your paperwork, your invoicing, your chasing up, all the stuff that they uh, don't tell you about that you need to do if you work in a big company. HR, recruitment, uh, invoicing, all the paperwork. So you had 300 days, but actually you can only work for a third of those, 100 days. So take that number and divide it by 100. That would be a good number to be your day rate if you're going to be a consultant or working for yourself because you can only charge that for 100 days of the year uh, whilst doing it. Do you have what it takes, the passion and creativity uh, and vision to charge that much, much a day to clients? If you have, welcome to consultancy. If you don't, you need to work a little bit harder to produce something that people are willing to pay you for that. Cool? When I say cool, you have to say cool. Is that cool? Good. Uh, so I just want to show you a video. So the cocktail kit contains all the equipment that you need to make. Can I, uh, can I get the volume up a little bit? I'll go back a little bit. Um, so a project I've been working on for maybe a, a year and a half now, something I, I've dedicated towards. Um, I think as any entrepreneur or someone that's uh, gone into it will tell you, you put your life savings, you put your mortgage at risk, and it takes twice as long, uh, maybe three times as long, to get to market as you want. So hopefully later this year, we're going to be launching a new cocktail kit. But it's not actually for bartenders, it's for consumers, for people at home. Because we see the cocktails at home elements uh, really kicking off, especially in the US and the UK in developed markets. Uh, and maybe here, if there's anyone partners that think uh, this is an interest, designed a kit called the, the Q Kit, where three guys uh, in Norway came up with the, this concept, uh, and I'm the, the face of the brand. So let's, uh, let's try that again with a bit more sound. So the cocktail kit contains all the equipment that you need to make professional cocktails at home. From the smart design of the shaker, to the muddler, to the strainers, to the jiggers, everything that you need, as well as the revolutionary software that will teach you and show you every step of the way to make professional cocktails at home. So the cocktail kit also doubles as your icebox, so you've got everything at your fingertips. Have it at your home or take it to a party to be the next cocktail maestro. So a new kit, a new shaker, which we're not ready to launch yet, but the kit should be coming out in the next, uh, next couple of few months. Uh, but it's all in one, but it's the software that we want to revolutionize. And we want to use bartenders to design cocktails for us, put them on the app, put them through the kit uh, and everything in there. So as I said, this is brought to you by Diageo Bar Academy. Its mission is to stay informed, inspired, and connected. So I want to think about what is your bartender journey. Once again, I want to get a bit interactive. What I want you to do is take your phone out again. I want you to take a selfie of you with this screen. So I'd like you to stand up with your phone and take a selfie of yourself. All right. Everybody, stand up for me. Yeah, man. Oh, you've been sitting down for too long. I've had a drink. Take a selfie. Hopefully that will come out. What's your bartender journey? I, actually, I just wanted to be in all your, uh, your posts. <laughs> now, what I want you to do right now, I got a little bit of time. I want you to post this wherever you want to post it. Instagram, Facebook, social. I want you to post it right now. Make a post about what's your journey. What's your dream? What do you want to do? Do you want to be a bartender for life? Do you want to be an agency? Do you want to be a consultant? Do you want to walk out of my lecture? <laughs> Come on, right now, I want you to do a post with that picture about what is your dream. Because once you put it out there, you're going to get questions from your friends and people posting what it is. It. So make a post right now. What time is there like the present to make a statement about what you want to do in your life, in your career? You're here as the root, as Simon said, Roots grow into trees. Where is this going to take you? What is your bartender journey? Share with me. What is your journey, my friend? My journey, my journey is life. Your journey is? Yeah, life is my, my life is bartending. Good. 
So a bartender for life over there. Any more journeys? Share with me. What are you writing right now? Just that guy I'm writing in Russian. Sharing information. So you want to be a trainer, a teacher, an inspirer, an educator. What do you want to do? Right, I'm getting real now. Give me some words. Where do you want to be? Where's your journey? You want to be an innovator? Good. I don't understand, but yes, good. Anyone tell me in English? <laughs> you want to be a consultant? Good luck to you. What do you want? Where do you want to take your journey? Where do your roots grow to? You have no idea. You're just going to sit there and smiling as he's talking to me. Good. He's got a martini glass tattooed on his face. I know what he's going to be. Don't worry. I know you. <laughs> Where do you want to take yourself? You don't know. Find your itty guy. Say again. New Orleans. What did you say? Translate. Somebody translate for me. He wants to be a bartender in New Order. Yes, okay, I have no idea, but everyone seems happy with that answer. So that's good. No, don't talk to me. Where's your journey? What did you write? That's in Cyrillic, my friend. Da. Need? Спасибо. Чинк. На здоровье. That's, that's it from my Russian. All right. <laughs> I'll get back up there before I embarrass myself. Um, <laughs> so if you want to feel more and get more inspired, follow Diageo Bar Academy on their Facebook. Uh, they're doing over 200 uh, sessions last year here in Ukraine. Uh, so stay connected uh, through there. Once again, uh, I finished earlier. Uh, connected. Instagram me, Nomu Consult as my company. Um, it's been a talk that I've written just for today. I'd like to thank you for listening. That's it. The end. Woo. Woo. Oh, a gift card for me. Woohoo! Thank you, Barometer. Yay! Кожен день за вилючи горнятку кави, баристи рідко переймаються за якісний та вчасний сервіс обладнання. Але ж 90% кавових машин виглядають саме кавове масло на стінках холдера, накид на тенах, молочний камінь ззовні та бактерії всередині. Тепер, дякуючи про сервіс, власники кав'ярень можуть не турбуватися про безпеку свого обладнання, баристи про смак кави, а відвідувачі про своє здоров'я. Про сервіс. Давайте піднімати культуру споживання кави разом.